What's up guys, I'm here at Starbase and this Starship is gonna launch tomorrow live on my channel, so be ready. We are a little concerned, but now they've just stacked the Starship, literally they just stacked the drone left saying that, hey, they're all good, ready to go. And now this thing is gonna launch into space tomorrow and can't wait to watch it live, watch it live on my channel. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Look at this place. This is Bucky's. We're on the way to the Starship launch. Everything's set to go, so I want to take you guys along for the ride. I live in Portugal, but I had to come back for some medical issues. I'm visiting with family, and I thought it was a great opportunity to drive down to Starbase. We came down and stayed at Rocket Ranch. Look at these cement posts that's for water storage. There's rockets around. This is driving into the area, Starbase, right outside of Brownsville. These are these electrical wires. I mean, you notice right away something's different when you have six hot wires in the ground on top there. This looked new. And we finally arrived at Rocket Ranch after a six hour drive from Houston. Beautiful, right on the Rio Grande, right across from Mexico there. So close to the launch site. And these guys are super stoked. Hope you guys enjoy. Here at Rocket Ranch right with Chris Lado. <laughs> Where are we What's at? Up, Rocket Ranch, we are Rocket Ranch. <laughs> All right, welcome. I'm here with Anthony. He uh, is the purveyor of Rocket Ranch, really the brains behind this operation. Mm -hmm. So you're taking us out in this bus tomorrow, oh, is that correct? Oh, it's gonna be fun, yeah. We got a wild time, man. Uh, my business partner, David, and I got some pretty good plans for everybody today. We're gonna get some cool stuff happening. Uh, yeah, we got, you know, about uh, 150 people were going out there. Uh, closest spot on the planet to see uh, Starship Super Heavy from. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a leap in human technology. It's really allowing us to, to become, uh, you know, sort of beings of the stars, right? This, these are the, the real, first steps that we're going to take as a species to really like uh, make strides towards exploring the galaxy. So this is a huge event, uh, you know, it's, it's really uh, our exploration to the stars. Um, so we're excited to share that with everybody and we have the best spot in the world to see it from. Excellent. So we'll go out on uh, on this bus and yeah. you have a, an outpost and how far is it from the actual launch? So we actually sit, uh, we're on the, on the what, you know, I like to say the bleeding edge of the exclusion zone. So we sit just two miles uh, from, from production and then 3.7 from the launch site. So that makes it very, very, very close. Uh, wavered up, very, it's almost dangerous to be there <laughs> um, but it's a completely unobstructed view we have a, a beautiful you know, just pasture uh, in front Chris, of us this nature preserve and then at the tree. end of that you have the world's most powerful vehicle just standing there getting ready to fly that's amazing are you on the list to go to Mars I hope so you yeah, are yeah I'm down let's go Excellent. Uh, yeah it's a it's a you know I think we, as a species we have a responsibility to, to continue to be explorers I mean it's in our DNA and uh, for so many years I feel that we've um, We've sort of neglected that, you know. We, we're we're so stuck in this like bubble of conflict right now, and we really need to start working on much harder problems. So, Mars is one of those things where it's such a difficult problem to solve that it really brings people together, regardless of, you know, what their beliefs are, or what their you know situation is. They they still um, have this desire to to do better for the greater good of humanity, and that, and that's what calls uh, people here. I think that 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 endeavor um, to be better than we are. Excellent, and I've, I think we talked about it before, but you haven't seen any unidentified anomalous phenomena here with all the cameras or anything. No, any you would lights. think, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely beautiful lights. Uh, we do, you know, we we often see ISS and things like that overhead, but you know, unfortunately, uh, I, I I definitely think they're watching. You know, if, oh. if if there was ever a thing to watch, it's Starship. So I hope they're watching. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll have our eyes peeled tomorrow, and. Yeah, come for the live feed, so we'll be streaming. Anthony's very graciously allowed to stream, restream his Rocket Ranch. He has cameras set up mm -hmm. actually uh, here and at the outpost. That's you right. have additional cameras, yeah. so we'll be streaming that as and uh, doing interviews as well. So be the launch. And what do you think tomorrow? You think it'll launch in the uh, on time? Oh man, it's so hard to guess sometimes. You know, I, I like to think that we we have to have this sort of Zen. Um, 
sort of uh, state in, in order to really enjoy this. You can't just live in this, oh my God, is it going to go up? Uh, it'll happen when it happens, right? Yes. Uh, so we were all expecting yesterday, and, and uh, you know, that didn't happen. And, and, you know, rocket science is famously complicated, so, <laughs> so it's one of those things. But uh, I'd like to think that it will go up tomorrow. They fixed whatever issues they had today, so they were working on that, that uh, grid fin actuator. That's been resolved. They did it in record time. We've never seen a hot staging ring go up that fast, nor a part installed that quickly just overnight. Cool. That was incredible. So I think they're ready to go. Excellent. All right, guys. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button, notifications, and then we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Hey, awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. They produce them there, and they drive them on a little all the way there. Yeah, yeah, look at the nose the cone on there. the right, that black nose cone. Right. That's big. Oh, yeah. It's nine meters across in width. It's no joke. Star base, look at that. It's, it's almost stacked right there. It's getting fully stacked now. Exactly at the top looks like it, but it's not fully lined up. I think they're like lining up now. They're gonna have two people up there like, okay, that looks good, Bob. It doesn't need to line up perfect. Four feet behind <laughs> it doesn't need to line up perfect. It's got little arrows that are like, it lines These up, Bob. Yeah. Right, no, 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 I like the gender approach to uh, space travel. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I just stack it no. up. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's, that's it doesn't good have enough. to be perfect. Is it holding? Yeah. Okay, did you shake it? It's on there. Yeah, heat it, hit it with a hammer. Okay, then put that bolt in, it'll be fine. Like, it's so big, we're just still driving to it. You're like, no, no, we're almost there. No, nope. still driving to it. <clears throat> they gotta finish this wall today, too. <laughs> they gotta get that wall up. Yeah, get that wall up. They're like, come on, get the wall. Here's the hopper. Yeah, we're going to pass right by the Starhopper. Look at that. It's so cool. That's the thing that they used to test the landing system. Look, it's just lining up now. They're just lining it up. Yeah, the stack. We just passed oh, that Padre speed. Look at that drone up there. You can't. That's theirs. That must be theirs because you can't fly a drone there. They're like, is it lined up? Look, check it in the drone. Look at these giant oxygen tanks. Look, it's not bubbling anymore. This was always bubbling last time. Can you sit right in there? Yeah. All right, so uh, welcome. As you can see, we're out in front of Starship. They literally just stacked it for the hopefully the final time of this this spaceship. And it's for its uh, suborbital flight tests, right? But it should be a huge event. And you've been here for so long. So what, what's your name, sir? I'm Calvin Worley. Calvin Worley, okay. And Calvin, you're kind of a key piece area, it seems like. Uh, how long have you been here with your, your camper here, Base Camp Zero? I think we were a year and a half, maybe, somewhere in there for Base Camp Zero. Okay, so you're, and how long have you actually been here, like on site? This time? Yeah. I went home for a few weeks, and in that Ring of Fire eclipse, I came back, which is maybe two or three weeks ago. So I've been a long stretch this time. Okay, cool. And what do you think, does it feel different this time? Do you think? It's different from uh, the previous yeah. times you've come out? It does. Why? How, why because, does it... because we got Base Camp Zero. <laughs> you got Base Camp Zero? I mean, yeah. Anybody comes here, they either the airplane ride or Base Camp oh, Zero is their favorite experience. So, yeah, when this works, everybody's happier. Cool. And yeah, we came last week and you gave us uh, a little piece of the tile, right? What was right. that from? Uh, serial number? SN24. SN24. So, why that piece? And where'd you get the tile? Well, after the, launch, after the launch, it blew up, and I knew it would be washing in. So I covered 150 miles, but I walked about 30 miles of beach and, and picked up quite well, a few gallons. Awesome. So you, you found it out where it, where it exploded, I guess, the previous? Well, it exploded and then washed back because it was 23 miles out, so it had to wash in for a week. It, it scattered from Corpus Christi to 150 miles south of here, here in Mexico. Okay. And what, what do you think about uh, tomorrow? What do you think? Are you have high confidence or high hopes? Yeah, I really do. I, I, I question the re-entry, but to, to that point, I'm 100% I'm sure it can do it. So you think it's going to launch tomorrow, hot stage will go well, and then we'll see about the re-entry maybe? You better get ready for it. I think tomorrow's the day. And then, awesome. So we are ready. I hope it goes tomorrow so much, yeah. Anything you want to show? What's your favorite part of your vehicle here? 
you, what's the coolest single element you show anyone? I well, think the front, right? right? Front. This is what I, had. I had a couple wrecks, people knocking my bumper off, and I'm a carpenter. So I, I built a wooden bumper, which was harder than I thought it'd be, but you don't see many wooden bumpers. But the real jewel is <laughs> I got rid of the GMC. Now it's a SpaceX rover. <laughs> now it's a SpaceX rover. Awesome. And, and it is. You know, it's sat here in front of the Starship for two years now, and uh, it is. It's a rover. <laughs> it's a rover. Well, cool. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Base Camp Zero. Awesome. He'll be here tomorrow and later on if you come down here. As long as they're working out here where people are coming, I'll try to be here. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Okay. So this is the Spider. We're here at Starbase, right behind me is where the last launch took place in April. And you look at this, this thing's called the Spider. It's a piece of rock that flew all the way from that launch mount. Look over there, how far. This giant piece of rock, if you can imagine the power and that littered around this whole area is rocks. You know, not quite this big. This is very big. I heard about this one and you can't really see it from the path, but you can see the metal up here but it's just steel rebar. Look at this, just bent like crazy and this giant piece of rock just thrown right into the sand just shows how much power is going from this thing. And right now they just stacked the Starship actually on top. It's 72 meters, if you can imagine, 72 meters for that booster. And then the Starship is 50 meters, 50 meters on top. And that black, that's the tile that they're putting because it's coming back through high entry atmosphere. It's going to create intense heat so it's just like the shuttle they have those tiles on there and you can see if you can see in the film there's a there's a drone up there it's like checking right the big arms called mechazilla those big arms are going to catch the starship actually and the booster but right now they're used to stack it and they stacked it now that drone is up there checking if steve tightened the bolts enough to hook on the starship onto the booster below it and even more amazing if you see the actual launch mount there, we'll go up a little closer here, but look at that thing. Seeing it in person looks like something out of Starship Battle, Battlestar Galactica. Just amazing construction. There you there's the rebar for you. <laughs> Spider. <laughs> okay, so now we're out as close as we can get and you can just walk up. I mean, there's no fence between us. This is it, just these sticks, trespassing prohibited. You know, don't step across that. I have heard drones come out and will actually say, you need to move away. And that's how they'll disperse people when this thing launches in the morning. It's supposed to launch in the morning. They just stacked it. I mean, look how giant that thing is. That's Mechazilla insane. And this launch mount here, that thing blew apart. And like I mentioned with the spider, you can see all the giant pieces of rubble here just strewn out as the giant explosion happened. And you can see now they built a ramp there because it destroyed the tank farm before. You can even see where they actually did the repairs on those tanks. But it looks fully stacked. The drone that was just there as we're walking up, it was checking, <laughs> it was checking the alignment. They basically just back, it looks aligned everybody. And that was actually, they had to de-stack it yesterday because the grid fin, you see one of those fins, they actually used those fins on missiles, Russian missiles, famously the Adder, the AA-12 is an active radar guided missile and it uses radar fins or grid fins just like that uh, it they're much more responsive they produce a lot more drag but if you think about it you have much more response because you have many more fins and that's why they use those grid fins well they had a problem when they did the test the grid fin motor did, it failed so they had to replace the grid fin motor so think about that last night we watched him replace this grid fin motor two guys up there like replacing the motor and then they checked it, everything checked out good. Now they've stacked the Starship again. We were getting concerned. Uh, if it goes too late, you know, it's not gonna be able to launch tomorrow, but now it looks like they will be able to launch tomorrow. And from here, I'll be showing it live on my channel. So, you know, subscribe, hit the like button, share this. I know it's not UAP stuff, but we're gonna have a lot of eyes in the sky. Maybe we'll see UAPs, but this is gonna be amazing technology. And the amazing thing about Starship, it's gonna open up space. This is the railroad to space. My first video on YouTube actually was about this. I, my first video, if you go back, was about the railroad to space, Elon Musk railroad to space, and this is it. Now we'll be able to bring stuff back from space and they will need test payloads. So maybe some camera systems up there, uh, they'll be willing to put as payloads. So check it out. It's gonna be launching Saturday, Saturday morning. Sounds like seven to nine. So we'll be out there, we'll be ready, and hopefully we'll have some good feeds uh, from Rocket Ranch. If 
I can secure that. So check it out tomorrow. Subscribe and get notifications for this baby launch into space. Pretty much all the way up last He's got to go check it now. He's like... Oh, you see the elevator? There's an elevator going down. I just want to see this giant cherry picker go up like 100 feet, 150 feet. Like that's 70 meters. The numbers are just ridiculous. 72 meters. That's like 250 feet. So that's silver.